All right, so this is Station Fall. Um, in this game, uh, you are trying to meet your victory condition points. So you have two uh, cards in your hand. Um, you're going to choose to be one of those characters, and then the other character is going to be your bonus card. And then that card is going to be flipped 90 degrees um, to show that that is your bonus card. So, for example, if... I was the commander, and my bonus card was the doc bot. Then my um, the points that I'm trying to earn are listed on the card. I want I uh, get one point for every human that survives, um, and then plus two points if all others in the chain of command survive. Uh, then I score two points if the commander's on board and not down at station fall. Right. So that is my how I'm getting points from my main character and then my bonus character, I just look at this little bit in the lower left. Um, so in this case, if the doc bot was my bonus, I want the doc bot to be down before station fall. All right, so it's not enough that uh, these people are going to burn uh, in the atmosphere, they need to suffer beforehand. So, uh, that is uh, essentially what you're trying to do in the game. Uh, the average score in this game is around eight. Um, so every point counts. Um, you also get points for your wild compromat if you still have that at the end of the game. Um, and uh, I believe that's it. Okay, so uh, on your turn, you can do uh, numerous things. Uh, first, you can reveal your character. If you reveal your character, your conspiracy power becomes active. So in the case of the commander, you know, forceful voice or, or whatever your conspiracy power is. Um, so you can reveal at the start of your turn. Uh, usually people don't reveal until later in the game, but that is a strategic decision. Um, you may want to reveal early in the game if you feel like your conspiracy power is really good and really helpful. However, if you reveal, then everyone knows what your victory condition is and they can actively try to prevent that from happening. So that is a uh, reveal. Uh, Suborn is putting these cubes on uh, any character card. So you can put as many cubes as you like on any character card. If I wanted to put all eight cubes on the commander, I could do that. And uh, now it's going to be very hard for anyone else to suborn the commander. Um, so the cube limit is whatever your uh, character is. On the upper right of the card, it gives you a cube number. And that is how many cubes you can put out before you lose points. So if you are the commander, for example, uh, you can put out five cubes. Um, and then after that, you can put up to two more cubes, but you will lose a point for every cube that you put out. If you are the commander, you can never put out more than seven cubes unless you get the, well, or the, the compromise that says you have an extra cube. But for almost everyone, um, you cannot exceed uh, two cubes over your cube limit. Right, so with the commander it would be seven. Um, with the exile, it would be nine, etc. Okay. Uh, so you put a suborn cube on any character. It doesn't have to be the character that you activate. You can just put it somewhere, and then you activate one of the characters that you have suborned. Um, so if uh, as my first turn, I can say, okay, I'm going to suborn the commander, and then I'm going to activate the commander, right? When you put a disc on a character, if there are no other discs on that character, you do however many actions. Uh, uh, it says uh, for almost every character, it's going to be two. Um, the Corpsicle and a couple other characters only do one action. But um, you're going to do two actions if there's only one disc. If there is... Um, at least one disc already on the card, uh, you can only do one action on it, All right? There are exceptions, I'll explain those later. Uh, so that is uh, 
activating. Um, you can also use Compromat. Uh, so there's specific Compromat. So these little Compromat chits are specific to each character. Uh, when you grab them, um, you cannot play them that turn. And in fact, uh, you can't reveal them until the, the end of your turn to yourself. You never reveal them to other players. Uh, then uh, going forward, you can play that Compromat as part of your turn. Um, if that the Compromat is on a uh, non-revealed character, an NPC, as I'll refer to it from now on, non-player character, uh, the character you can do one action with that character. If the character has been revealed, you can still play the Compromat, but the person that is that character gets to decide whether that character does the thing that you want them to do or not. If they choose not to do that thing, they lose two points at the end of the game. Um, you also have your wild card compromat, which are these pennies. This is a little inside joke because uh, old uh, classic SMG games used to require you use your own pennies as like tiddlywinks. The game Rocket Flight actually required that you use 200 pennies um, for marking things in the game. Uh, and American Megafauna actually also has these pennies because they were required in the game. Uh, in any case, uh, so this wildcard compromat can be used uh, on anyone that is not a revealed character or anyone that is not paranoid. And I believe uh, in this game, only the first officer is paranoid. Um, and he's not there. So. Yeah, so the, the, the wildcard compromat uh, can be used at any time just to do an extra action. Uh, if you do not use your wildcard compromat, uh, it's one point at the end of the game. Okay. Right? Uh, so that is... Uh, then if you have resolved some event, that may be you, uh, you had set a timer to launch a pod your previous turn or you set a self-destruct or something or other um, when you do something like that you're going to put out a disc of your color to show that you did that the previous turn and at the end of your turn that's going to happen so if i set the uh, escape pod to launch on my previous turn at the end of this turn i remove my disc and the escape pod launches so you resolve events essentially all right so on, uh, as one of your actions, you could move. So when you move, it's just you know regular movement. Uh, there are two rings uh, and then uh, some leaps up here and then some stuff up here. So this is this hub right here is uh, this kind of middle section right here. This is in zero gravity. So anything that is a square, is in zero gravity, all right? That matters for some characters that are zero born, meaning that they move into zero gravity um, as a free action. Um, so for example, the space chimp, I believe is zero born or can be zero born if uh, it's revealed. Yeah, if it's revealed, it's zero born. Um, so if the space chimp uh, moves from, and, and he has tunnel rat as well, yes. So tunnel rot means that you can move through these vents, the brown dashes. So if the space chimp was, astro chimp was uh, revealed at the start of their turn, they can move from here to here, and that would be a free action. But you only get one free action on your turn. So then they could move up there as one action, and then up there as one action. All right? Uh, so... You can move a character from one section to an adjacent section. The brown dashed lines are vents that can only be accessed through Tunnel Rat. Um, you cannot move through locked corridors. So the consort can't move from the rec room to the security station uh, because there's a lock right here. Um, unless you have command. If you have command, you can move through locked doors. So hmm. the commander can do that. Um, also, there is no computer here, but if you had the computer, then they could also do that. Uh, and uh, the inspector, who I think is in the game, yeah, the inspector uh, it, it moves as if he has command 
uh, during red alert um, or after uh, uh, red alert um, so that's locked doors uh, dragging bodies you can drag a body into zero gravity um, if they are down character so that's uh, so that is movement so uh, you can also pick up drop or give an item um, I'm not going to discuss too much about all of the different variables with that just we can ask questions as things go along um, you can uh, throw an item um, into uh, either an adjacent section uh, but when you throw things, uh, you have to throw them spinward or anti-spinward. So the if you are in the rings. So here you have uh, this arrow there, and then you have this arrow there. That means that when you throw something, you have to throw it spinward. So you can throw from the incinerator to the mainframe, but you can't throw from the mainframe to the incinerator. You can't throw in zero gravity whatever direction you want. All right, um, there's attacking. So there are two types of weapons. There's just regular weapons and then there are guns. And I don't believe that this game starts with any guns on the station. Uh, the first officer's in the, in the game, so there's no gun there. Uh, is the regular robot in the game? It doesn't look like just a dockbot, right? So I don't believe that anyone starts with a gun. Um, so with the monkey, do you? I, I mean, somebody somebody was talking and I couldn't hear them. Okay, Jacob, I can barely hear you. How's this? That's better. Security 2000 has a gun. Has okay, a so that is a robot. Uh, the, the name recently changed. So that is an integrated gun, meaning you can't jack that gun from somebody. Um, the... The space the chimp, the astro chimp wants, so the border, uh, yes, the border does have a gun. So we'll give the border a gun. And the border also starts with a space suit. Um, so. And uh, really quickly, Andy, before we move on, um, with throwing, it's actually anti um, spin word according to the rules. Okay. And everyone should have a spacesuit that is listed having a spacesuit. I think we're set there. There's no billionaire, so there's no dive suit. Um, and it doesn't look like there are any guns that start on board. Though I feel like the... Because the, the Astro Chimp wants a gun. Um, I feel like... There it should looks be a like gun you can board. get a gun. It looks like you can get a gun by going to the print shop. Yes, and you can. I, 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 I'm aware. I'm going to discuss how that works later, but I'm trying to see if there's a gun that starts on board. Because there should be if the Astro Chimp is in the game. Otherwise, it's very difficult for the Astro Chimp to print a gun with command. Um, they would have to have basically the commander do it who is on the whole other side of the map. But maybe that's the case. Maybe uh, Matt just made that a lot more difficult for the chimp now. Um, okay, let's just assume that's the case. And there are no guns that start in the game. All right, so uh, you can attack with a weapon. Um, when you attack somebody with a weapon, if they are a robot or unsuited, uh, they are down. Down means you flip over the chit uh, to show that they are down. Um, essentially, that means they're dead, uh, but they can be revived, and we'll discuss how that happens later. Uh, so if they don't have a suit or they're a robot, you can down them. Um, if they have a suit... This is changed, and if somebody has read the rules recently, you can correct me, uh, but a suit is undamaged if you hit it with a weapon, or is it damaged when you hit it with a weapon? Because that's gone back and forth. 
Uh, I'm looking at it right now. Discard the suit. So with a gun, you down them, and if they were a suit, okay. Of human, so with a weapon, it does not damage the suit. Okay. With a gun, uh, you down the character, and if they are, uh, if they have a suit, you discard the suit as well. Um, yeah, it says if they were a suited human. I guess that's just to yeah. exclude the chimp. Okay. And then there is uh, jacking. Um, instead of downing your target, you take uh, the item that they possess. Uh, and this we've gone back and forth on this as well, but I believe that you can jack anyone as long as you have a weapon. And there is no, there used to be like a hierarchy if you have a weapon, but they have a gun, then you can't attack them. But I think that right now it's just simplified to as long as you have a weapon, uh, you can jack them. Yeah, it looks like that's right. All right. Uh, so that is uh, attacking. Then there's uh, sabotage. So you can damage uh, a current section uh, with a weapon or a gun. Um, and the whatever phase we're in will tell you what things you can do. So right now you can attack a robot, you can uh, jack a human or robot, you can sabotage, but you cannot attack humans. And if any of these things are done, there's a witness penalty. And I'll go over the witness penalty later. Uh, you can transmit data offsite, you can't la launch bots right now. So if we switch to red alert, then, you know, things happen all right so uh you can use nanomeds so nanomeds where do the nano they're do, here do we not they're okay. here so so these nanomeds right here uh and this changed recently uh but uh, the nanomeds will allow you to revive a human if they are down um or they can be used to uh essentially like hop somebody up on meth uh, um, they they can uh, they become uncanny, and uncanny means that if there is only one disc on there and you put your disc on there, mm. you have two actions instead of one action. That's the same as the stranger's action. Yes, uncanny uh, is an action that some characters already have, but you can make any character mm. uncanny <clears throat> if they use the nanomeds. Now. Um, it does not look like he made the change. So it used to be that you had to take the nanomeds to become uncanny. Uh, he was discussing a change where instead, as long as you hold the nanomeds, you are uncanny. But I don't see that in the rules. So we're going to go with you have to take the, the nanomeds to become uncanny. Yeah, I, I don't think uncanny is in the rules at all. Because I know yeah. there was a, a note that said he needed to put it in there. Yes, uh, that is a note that I gave him. Um, so perform, uh, you can perform system actions. So, uh, if you have, if you are in the security station, uh, or you are a hacker of a certain type, um, I believe the doctor is in the game and the doc, where's the, where's the doctor? Is the doctor not in the game? Yeah. the doc Okay. So. Nope. The doctor is a hacker, so if jammers are off, the doctor has system access. So if you have system access, meaning you are in the security station, or the computers in the game, or y your ability says that, uh, or the, the character's ability says that they have, they can do system actions, you can do these actions down here. So the system actions are contingency protocol. This changes <laughs> command from the person that is in command to the next person down in the chain of command. So the commander actually mm -hmm. has a pretty easy job right now because no one else is in the chain of command on the station, right? The uh, engineer so, The engineer, my apologies. I didn't see that because there is a big hand in the way. Um, so the engineer would be the next in command. So uh, if somebody did contingency protocol, it would go from the commander to the engineer, right? Then if somebody did contingency protocol again, there is no one else in the chain of command. So they choose who gets command, right? Uh, so that is contingency protocol. 
you can do uh, uh, you can lock stuff down so you can just add or remove locks um, or fire suppression you can replace a fire hazard with a gas hazard uh, remove a gas hazard or remove a fire token with a time disk on it um, so if something blows up you can put it out uh, because uh, if something blows up then there's a hazard and you can't go in there unless you have a suit it's a whole thing you can also turn the cameras and the jammers off so as long as the cameras are on everything is witnessed as long as it's not in the dark so the only places that are in the dark are escape pod mcqueen and any any space that has like a black background so as long as the cameras are on everything is witnessed and there is a witness penalty if you try to jack somebody or attack somebody or do any nefarious things um, if the cameras are off things are only witnessed if somebody that can witness things is in the room uh, when it happens All right and then there are the jammers the jammers are on right now uh, so the only way to transmit anything in the station is through the rear array and the forward array All right if you turn the jammers off then you can zap data anywhere in the station so if somebody has the evidence they can transmit the evidence to, to somebody else another character um, freely uh, if the billionaire was in the game then they would be able to transmit stuff off the station not just in the rear array or the forward way so if your uh, goal is to so, uh, transmit uh, the evidence or um, no, really anything um, you have to do it through the arrays or uh, you have to survive with the evidence and then at the end of the game decide who you want to send it to so that is um, system action or system actions so all, what all of those things do um, there are also command actions command actions can only be performed by the person in command and uh, they have to so for example if the escape pod was here it would be a command action if, if you were in command you can go from there to there so command actions are these up here and they're um, much more destructive <laughs> uh, so bypass releases project x so project x is randomized every game and it is either a very very bad thing or a not so bad thing uh, that is released and uh, things happen so it could be a death ray that will attack anyone that tried to escape or it could be a monster like an alien style monster that is released and they're going to um, eat someone every turn uh, or it could be just space goo that doesn't really do anything uh, so the project x can be released with a command action there's other ways to release project x but this is one of them uh, you can set self-destruct and choose between four and six time disks so if you can get up here with command and activate the self-destruct and say, I'm going to put four discs down, the game is going to end four turns from then. Um, so the game could end pretty quickly if somebody is able to do that. Or you can set abandon ship. Abandon ship puts it in this phase right here. So escape pods can launch and, you know, things, things happen. Uh, so those are the command actions that can only be done from the uh, command deck um, sorry from the command pod which is the command deck the, really this used to be here but oh no it is still here that's for the botanist that's over there okay so those are command actions uh you can launch a pod so uh if you are in a pod you can launch a pod by saying, I'm going to launch a pod. And then you put one of your discs, one of your colored discs on there to show that at the end of your next turn, that pod launches. If you are in a pod, you can also have another character that is in the rear airlocks launch that pod. So you can say, okay, um, as an action, um, I'm going to uh, move into the space pod into the escape pod and then i'm going to use my wildcard compromat to make this other character launch the pod um and you know go so that is how launching pods work um these pods 
can be launched by anyone. The OSHA ship can only be launched if you have a if you have a badge. The command pod can only be launched if you are in command. Okay. Yep. Uh, then, uh, yeah, that's basically all of the actions. Um, so, when you attack somebody, I mentioned. Uh, if it's witnessed, things happen. So if the section is lit, meaning if the cameras are on and it's not dark, uh, it has been, and or there's somebody in the room, uh, the action has been witnessed and there is a witness penalty. Uh, the witness penalty is that you have to discard one cube from your unused pool. So you only start with eight discs, uh, use them wisely. Um, so it, the, the witness penalty should be um, something you have to seriously consider. Uh, so far in the games, people are still doing things and not realizing that you know you're gonna be out of cubes late game. So I'm letting you know now these cubes are precious. Um, drones are not witnesses. Criminals are not witnesses. Uh, the section is dark. There are no witnesses. Um, So there's conventional and unconventional attacks. Unconventional attacks can be uh, crushing someone with a cargo claw. We don't. Ha There's a troubleshooter in this game. Should we nope. have added? No. Okay. So there's no claw in this game. But throwing a fireball and firebomb into their section, um, walking them into a booby trap, telepathically forcing them to walk into a hazard, or shoot themselves in the face, uh, attacking them with a remote control drone. Um, Matt keeps adding stuff to the unconventional attacks because we keep coming up with new ways to kill people without actually killing people, without like you know witnessing stuff like that. So as an, an unconventional attack um, is a uh, witnessed action, um, or it's an action that can be witnessed. Uh, you can't perform an unconventional attack on a on a human. Unless it's a uh, red alert or abandoned ship, just like any other type of attack. Uh, essentially, this bit is here just because we keep finding new ways to do bad stuff without breaking the rules, and that's the problem. Okay, so um, EVA. There are certain sections of the station that you can go EVA from. So uh, you can go in and out of the station from the tube or from the rear airlocks, right? It has two arrows facing in both directions, meaning that if you have a spacesuit, uh, you can go EVA here as one action and then come back uh, from EVA here as another action, right? You can also go EVA from this base and this base, but only out, you can't go back in. That's why it has arrows only in one direction, right? When you are EVA, you just put, for example, the border is already EVA. You just put your token here, and that shows that you are currently EVA, right? Um, zero gravity, I mentioned manufacturing. So uh, there is a print shop here. In the print shop, you can manufacture different things. Uh, you can manufacture more nano meds, um, and you can manufacture a gun if you have command, but only if you have command. Uh, okay. So there are there's only one type of crypto in this game, and that is uh, the regular crypto. There's no computer, so that's not extra crypto. Um, you can carry as many things as you want, but you can't carry duplicates of the same item. So you can't have two nano mints. Um, hazards. Uh, there's fire and gas hazards. Um, you need suits to get into there. If you are, if you don't have a suit and there is a hazard where you are, where the character is, that character is downed. Um, damage sections. When you damage a section, we're going to put a black disc on it. That section cannot be used until it is repaired. Uh, there are no drones in this game, so only the engineer can repair a section um, in this particular game. Uh, You can figure out what Project X is by going into or out of the cryo lab. So if you go into the cryo lab, you can peek, and that's Alt Shift, what Project X is. All right. Um, power status. So right now we are in regular 
power. If somebody damages the mainframe or the reactor or the power core, um, I don't know why there isn't a lightning bolt on power core. Is that not a thing anymore? I'm going to assume that it's still a thing, and he just forgot to put a lightning bolt. I told him to add lightning bolts, but it looks like he only added it to a couple. Uh, so if you damage the mainframe, the reactor, or the power core, uh, we go into auxiliary power. If you damage any of those other three sections, then we go into blackout. So auxiliary power means that the cameras are off and basically everything that's listed here, right? So the, let me actually zoom into there. So um, all non-escape sections act as dark and cameras and jammers are non-functional. During blackout, all non-pod sections act as damaged, no system actions. Um, you're an abandoned ship, but you don't remove the locks um, and uh, the Project X, uh, can, is released because essentially all the power is down. It's kind of you know Jurassic Park style where you know the power goes out and all the bad things come out. Um, there is like 18 different movies that are referenced in this game, um, which you'll find out shortly. Uh, so during blackout, you can manually unlock sections as an action. All right, so that is power status. Now the different uh, alerts. So during yellow alert, um, this is what's possible. It's going to be fine. You can do things, and you don't usually have to worry too much. Uh, so we're going to have six turns of that. Then when we go to red alert, uh, this is blood red for a reason. Um, if we're in red alert, you can start attacking people. If the cameras are off and it's not witnessed, all hell is going to break loose. People are going to start dying very fast. All right. Um, so prepare for that. Prepare for uh, the possibility that, you know, as soon as red alert happens, your character or the characters that you care about are going to die. Um, then when we get to abandoned ship, uh, that's when you can start trying to escape the station. All right. Uh, there is one variable turn, so there is a one in three chance that the game could go on one more turn. We're going to turn this over. If it says station fall, that's the end of the game. If it says orbital decay, then we have one more turn. So there's going to be uh, that many turns. All right. The different items that are in the game. There's the artifact. Some people care about that. There's bio samples. Uh, there's no rat in this game, so the only bio sample is the bio sample. Um, there is uh, crypto, which is over here. Um, there is no dive suit in this game. There are no drones. The evidence is over there. Uh, the loot is over here. Nanomeds exist here, and you can print nanomeds. Um, Space suits are in different places, and there's weapons. All right, so. Uh, some terms to note. Conspirator means that you have you are tied for the most cubes on that card. So if something says that you, you want the, your conspirators to survive or, or something has to be with a conspirator, that means that you have the most cubes or tied for the most cubes on that character. If, you, if that is not the case, they are not a conspirator. Dominated means that you have more cubes than anyone else when you have dominated somebody. Suborned means that you have any cubes um, on it. Um, I mentioned the difference between player characters and NPCs. Uh, and uh, that's it. So the game ends during uh, station fall. And uh, we score. Um, I already mentioned how scoring works. Uh, in a six player game, there are going to be two winners. So the people with the two highest scores win. And that's it. That's Station Fall. Hey, Andy, I've got a quick question about the victory points.